the security guard and the wife are doing our second live stream of the day. Morgan jumped on today yep. for this one. So we're going to yep. do this over on the couch. And we have two cats and a dog that are going to more than likely like poke <laughs> their head into the stream because yeah. they want attention. But uh, what are we talking about today? Well, I thought we would talk about, I don't even know what you titled this. So I, I said, are women held accountable? <laughs> okay, we could go many different ways with this. I think after we talked about the the stabbing video this morning, okay. and I watched it after the fact um, of us talking about it, you know, there was a really big time, not a big time, but there was a time in that video where the girl, one of the girls was up in that guy's face. The um, This is the Apple River the stabbing. The Apple Stop. River stabbing. Lay down. Hang and on. so... Lay down. Lay down. I know. So my question is, should it's, you know, you titled it Are Women Held Accountable, but I feel like a conversation needs to be had about women putting themselves in a position of getting in a man's face. Oh, man. Can you even get, say that? I don't know if that's... I don't know if that's something that you can even say, like, in today's society. Like, I mean, I I know where you're going with it, and I get what you're saying, but, like, I don't know if that's I'm so I used correct. I use that as an example because that's a non-relationship. Right. But I also want, want to tie in relationship to this is should women be able to incite... Oh, man, you are really going to... You're going to... Keep going. I know, I'm not saying no. anything. You, you're you doing it. Go ahead. I'm just saying insight, you know, uh, aggressive behavior and tendencies towards men without knowing or being fully aware of what could happen back to them. All right. So we were watching the Apple River stabbing situation. Right. And then we were talking about the, the first interaction is between... Two women that that kind of grabbed the guy. There's an older. <laughs> I watched the trial today, so there's an older lady that comes over and initially grabs the guy and pulls him, and then I think another younger lady puts her hands on him. So that's kind of like the initial physical contact happens with two women towards the guy, and then the guy gets up and starts stabbing everybody. So you. Well, we're kind of talk yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it wasn't quite in that order, but yes. My whole point is, should women be able to do this? This is what I explained to you earlier. Chest bump and get in your face and be all kind of way, right? And for the, the guy has to take it, you know? Like, at what point is it okay if, if the guy, you know... I don't think that it's ever okay. I mean, like, you know, we talk to about... To get someone away from you. It, listen... At the end of the day, like, regardless of how any individual sees a situation with a female being aggressive towards a guy, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't matter what the logical response is. Like, if you're saying, if someone is, like, pushing up against you or being aggressive, do you have the ability to defend yourself? And I'm going to say that you really don't. Because historically, anytime that a man does anything in terms of either protecting himself or getting this woman off of him, then he's held responsible for that. Jonathan Majors is a perfect example. Like they have him on video grabbing the woman and like literally like putting her in a vehicle, not doing anything of like harm mm -hmm. and running away from her. And he lost everything. He lost like all of his jobs. He got arrested. They just had a trial. Like, you know, I don't I don't know. I, I get what you're saying and I get where you're coming from, but I don't know that like the reality is that a man can really do anything in that situation. If you do anything where you put your hands on a female, like you're gonna be held responsible for that. Even I know. So that is where I was kind of going with like having a conversation about it and and how that bleeds into relationships, right? Like I, so strictly from us like a secure so strictly from a security perspective like you know i talk a lot about optics and i talk about the importance of like guys understanding how things are seen and how they're viewed yeah so you know in, in almost any situation like there's 
the way something should be, there's the way that something is, and then there's the way that like it's going to be perceived. And I don't know that in that particular dynamic that there's ever a situation short of like someone so trying to kill you. Where is you it can... a combination of just because it's male, female? Like, would it matter if it was, does it matter? Is it because it's male, female, or just, or is it size? I think it's size. I think it's like. Because, you know, I'm thinking about some like 6'4 WNBA player. If I think that I'm like going to be trying to bump chest and like bow up on someone, but she's a woman. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And or in the reverse, if I think I'm going to do that to a guy who's five. But I don't really two. understand like what your question is. Are you saying like, should a man be able to physically fight mm. a woman if if they're in a relationship and she's being aggressive towards him? Not fight, but defend, defend himself, defend, deflect or things like that. Of course, without you being should be able to, but you're going to you're going to be that's you're, you're going to be persecuted. I don't see any reality where a man even if he is 100 percent in the right if he does something where he puts his hands on a female where he's going to be okay in that situation even yeah. if it's justified yeah i don't think so i mean i you know and or but and or in relationships too right i mean i feel like you kind of see and hear that like you know what i see in here I guess, but women who get aggressive and think that they can slap or hit their boyfriend and then have and have the mentality, I feel like, and have the gall that they're shocked when he shoves them away from him or slaps her back. You know, you kind of go, damn. You're trying, you are so being. I, you're not, what, what do you want me to say? Like, yeah, like, no, there's no. This is where I think, okay, I'll speak from the women's point of view. I, yeah. Women accountability has to come in because you're putting all, as a woman, I'm, I would be putting all of my trust in someone else to think that I can be so aggressive in coming at someone verbally aggressive and with my, with my body language, if I'm literally in their face you know, my hands are in their face. I'm yelling and screaming at them and bumping chest. I would be putting all of my faith into someone else thinking that they're not going to do something back. And I think that is very stupid and naive. Okay, now I see. I, okay, think, all right. I get what you're saying now. So when women think they can do those things because it's a man, and yes, men should never put their hands on women, but I think it's naive for a woman to think a man should and can never put his hands on me, but that gives her free reign to do whatever she wants. I don't think that is correct, and I okay. think we see that it, all the time. It, so we, okay, we, we talked about that, and that reality is the reality no matter whether you're talking about male to female, female to male, or male to male. Like, you know, there's people in the, in the comment section that would say crazy shit to me on the comment thread. And they are assuming that if they were in my face and they had that same type of energy, that I would have the same type of demeanor that I'm having on this chat. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I tell people that all the time working in security. You know, I, I talked about that on the stream today. You know, people at my location where I work, they deal with me four times out of the week, basically from start to from open to close. Yeah. I am very much into de-escalation. I'm very much into, you know, building rapport, very much into like a community policing aspect of way of doing my job. Everybody doesn't adhere to that. So what they're able to get away with, how they're able to talk to me, how they're able to carry themselves when I'm working is not the same way that they could do that when someone else is working. Or if they were to deal with somebody outside on the street. So everybody is taking a little bit of a risk in thinking that the person that they're dealing with, whether it's in a relationship or out on the street, that that person is going to not respond in a way that is harmful to them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you're just, if you're willing to go that direction and say something to somebody, bow up to somebody, you know, threaten someone, like you're assuming that that person is sane and mentally stable enough to not pull your card. I think that, you know, the one security guard that I know that I was working with, that I was helping to train, that I was trying to trying to mentor, you know, God bless the dead. And I don't know this to be certain, but 
just knowing his personality, it wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past him to have gotten into it with somebody mm -hmm. and to have said something that he put someone in a position where they felt the need to prove to him that they weren't the one. You know what I mean? And it cost him his life. That, that cost people their lives all the time. So, you know, it, it's not just in relationships or women towards men or, or women putting themselves in bad situations. I think that everybody does that. People are so quick to just assume that somebody is not going to harm them when they act a certain way or do certain things, you know? Mm -hmm. You get a little bit older, you know, I worked in a prison system. Like, I've seen people get killed. I've, I know people that have lost their lives. Like, you know, I've been in those situations myself where, you know, I have I've had to deal with that. Um, you know, you get older, you get wiser. But I don't know what you think. What, what, are you, what, what are you laughing about? I'm laughing at you. I'm just laughing at you. You're not going to get me on camera going like, yeah, yeah, beat that bitch's ass. Like, no, that is not going to happen. No, that's not at all no. what I said. Uh, it's not at all what I said. But I do think the conversation has to be had on women thinking that nothing should happen. That they get free reign to bow up to men with zero repercussions or consequences of those actions like i would never fix myself to think that i could bow up to you in any way because you're literally twice my size right like i mean i mean yeah but. i know you would never hurt me never strike me never do anything but I just think that that is a conversation that, that is missed and that you're over here literally tap dancing the way everybody else does, which is fine. But that's the conversation that is not had. Well, no, because like I've had this conversation with my daughters, you know, I've had I've I've had this conversation with my daughters. I've had this conversation with with people that I have relationships with, you know, I unfortunately people, they either. They understand this dynamic or they don't. And right now we live in a we live in a society where people just are completely ignoring reality. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um I'm trying to think of I think there was a there was a football player named Ray Rice. Do you remember the Ray Rice situation? This happened like 10 years ago. He was a football player for the Baltimore Ravens. Okay, mm -hmm. so him and his wife had gone to like a New Year's party or something, and there was video of them getting. Is that the they, they were getting into the elevator, and then and then she hits him, and then he hits her back. He like knocks her out, right? Oh, remember yeah. that whole thing, right? Yeah. And so one of the more prominent, famous newscasters, Stephen A. Smith on ESPN, he said that he came on and he was like, you know, I have sisters, I have a mother, I have aunts. And we've always talked about the importance of women not putting men in situations where they're relying on a man to show self-control. Like, don't don't put your hands on a man and then expect him to not respond in a certain way. When he said that, like, there was this huge backlash. Right. And they were going to fire him. So right. he literally had to come on television the next day and he was like, there's never any justification for a man to ever put his hands on a woman under any circumstances, I feel horrible that I said that. I owe everyone in the country an apology. Like, they literally raked him over the coals because he even... But that there's nuance, and that's the problem I have, too, is people can't see the nuance in that. I, with everything in my being, I feel like maybe, like, the average woman thinks that there is no circumstance in which a man should ever put his hands on a woman. At the same time, the conversation has to be had that women should not be able to act with complete fucking autonomy and think that nothing can happen back to them. Nothing should happen back to them. I'll say that. Nothing should happen back to them. That should... And that. I mean, you're talking about normal just action, reaction. Like, no one should ever be putting their hands on anyone and thinking that it's not going to have some sort of negative repercussion. Yes. Right? Yes. But that is a same conversation and you can't have critical thinking same conversations in today's society there's no nuance in anything That's true. you're either a hundred percent for something or you're a hundred percent against it you're either completely left or you're completely right you're 
pro this or you're anti that. Like no one wants to have a nuanced conversation because it takes effort and critical thinking and it takes some tough conversations and people don't want to have tough conversations about any sort of accountability. It doesn't matter what we're talking about. If we're talking about homeless people, they wouldn't want to have that conversation, you know? Right. Because you're talking about accountability. So I don't know that you would ever get a, a large number of women to even have this conversation, number one. Number two, definitely to agree with you. I think that like what you're saying would be looked at with real a real negative lens. Yeah. I, which, which glad, I didn't bring it up, so I'm my, glad that it's not me bringing it, it up. It makes my petty mouth want to open. <laughs> it does. It makes my petty mouth want to open. Jeez, man. Yeah. Mm. I, I mean, have you thought. ever have you ever had this conversation with somebody other than me? Mm, like you know, I've you have nieces. With, yeah, you have nieces. I, yes, absolutely. And then my daughters. Have you ever talked to my daughters about it? I don't think I've talked to your daughters about it. You talked to your nieces about I've it? Yeah, I've talked to my nieces about it. Like, a hundred percent I've talked to my nieces. And I've said my exact words when talking about things like this is never put your hands on a man and expect that he's... And, and think that he will not retaliate in some way and, and or hit you back. I mean, the black and white is don't think you can ever hit a man or a boy you're going to school or college with and think that he's not going to hit you back. You are putting 100% faith in him that you know that he wouldn't, right? And can you say that? Can you lay your life down and say that he would not strike you back? If you can't lay your life down and say that he would not strike you back, you shouldn't be putting your hands on him to begin with. You should be you putting your hands want, on people You shouldn't be putting your hands on people yeah. regardless. But clearly with a size or strength difference in things like that, right, for how it can go, it, in that way. I mean, I tell them this, we're talking very gender specific at this moment. So I tell them this, the same thing when I'm like, you know, don't be running around school and thinking that you're big and bad and you'll be fighting even other girls. Right. Like, and that's a whole separate conversation with how kids are. But yeah, I do tell my nieces or talk to them about that. That's putting faith in someone that they're not going to do. You and I like. were talking earlier. I thought this was a great thing that you brought up. You were talking about how like, parents today don't want to have like straight up conversations with their kids like there's too much dancing around things yeah you know that would be one topic where i think parents kind of dance around it because it's just there's like isms there's things that we say that are like you're expected to say it right yeah so you say, like, a man should never put his hands on a woman. And even if you believe that in your heart, that's not the reality of how a crazy person sees things, a homeless person in the street, right. a abusive boyfriend, a crazy stalker. Like, all of those things are legitimate possibilities. So if you don't explain that to your daughters and how to navigate that, if you don't explain the dangers of people potentially trying to sex traffic your kids or or anything. Like, if you don't talk about the reality, how can they be prepared for it? Um, one of the companies that I follow, like the two-way companies that I follow, you know, these are former Navy SEALs. And the guy was saying that he talks to his, like, five-year-old daughter. He had a conversation with his five-year-old daughter about sex trafficking and what that was, that – there's people out there that will try and take, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but yeah. there's people out there that will try and take you from mommy and daddy and they will they will do things to harm you and they will do things to hurt you. So I'm giving you these tools, I'm giving you this information so that you can be aware of it, you can look out for it, and you need to know that he said like, you know, do you think that daddy is strong? Do you know how strong daddy is? And she was like, yeah. And do you think that daddy is tough? And she was like, yeah. And he says, you know, as strong and as tough as daddy is, I can't save you if you do something and put yourself in this situation. He said, I will kill every single person I come in contact with, but I can't save you. If you don't listen to me and lock the doors when you're supposed to lock the doors, if you don't watch out for people that do this or or, or approach you like this, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like he was being very truthful in the reality of the situation and the consequences 
that if she didn't follow the plan that he had set out for her, that, you know, she might wind up in a bad situation. Mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of people are willing to do that. I, people aren't willing to do that in the security space. Like when we're talking about things, whether it's wearing body cameras, whether it's approaching people in a loss prevention position when you're only there and in an observe and report position or a secondary protection position. And we talk about all the dynamics that come from that. When I talk about the racial dynamics involved in a potential stop or an interaction and how that can get blown out of proportion and how companies are going to respond to that, how the contract is going to respond to that. People want to argue with me, right? Nope, it's not like that because I feel that it's different. It's not like what you're saying because I think it's different. And that's no different than what you're talking about. We're talking about a reality, but each person in today's day and age has been told that your reality is reality. Right. Reality is not reality. Right. So if you want to go and get in that guy's face and you want to slap him and spit in his face, poke him in the eye, then he's not going to do anything because he's not supposed to. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's my, that's my rant on it. Yeah. I think someone said something about parenting. I, don't, don't read the comments yet because if you get locked into the comments, like you're just going to start reading a bunch, well, of, bunch of negative shit. So just stay on your topics. I'm blind and, as fuck anyway. Right. So like, yeah, yeah. I can't see Yeah, shit. if she leans forward, she's not going to be and able I to read anything that's on there. I can't see anything that's on there. So that's yeah, fine. You know, it, I know. And sometimes it goes too fast. What was your second topic? So that was the I, accountability. You need to come to the table with some topics because I've got all kind of topics. No, but, this is you. Well, do you want me to talk about the one we talked about in the restaurant? Uh, Sure. That's. You were talking about the top five that you saw. Oh, you, yeah, yeah, you yeah. This up. Okay, yeah. So you lead this. All right. So Morgan is really big into reading romance novels. Okay, and when I say romance novels, they are <coughs> sex books. <laughs> okay, don't let women fool you and 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 try and jazz it up with the romance. Don't church it up. Yeah, don't dirt. church it up, dirt. <laughs> right. So I was listening to a podcast the other day, and this lady said that there were five fantasies. The top, this podcast's top five fantasies. It said that there was, there was a thousand women that were polled, right? No pun intended. And they had oh. asked them what were the five top fantasies for the women that read these types of books. Yeah. And so I was asking you if this was true or not. So right. they said in no particular order, okay, in no particular order, uh, it said uh, bondage, mm -hmm. multiple partners, um, public sex, public, a stranger. Uh-huh. And then what was the last one? It was... Bondage, public, stranger, multiple partners. Pleasure, and, pain. Oh, yeah. Pleasure and pain. Right? Yeah. So that was like the... That was the, their... That was their thousand-person polling, what they had said was... The top The five. top five things. And so I asked you if you thought that was true, and you said no, right? Yeah, I said no, because, I mean, you were talking about, I mean, bondage, pleasure, pain, multiple partners, stranger, or public sex right so i mean i said half of those sound like our hey, 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 hey. <laughs> but like those don't seem i don't those don't those seem kind of more kink based than fantasy in in some ways and then i just said ultimately there's only one mm, there, mm, I, mm, I said ultimately yeah. there's only one fantasy for women who read romance books and it's the same theme okay so wait so this is okay yeah now i remember all right because we had a long dinner yeah so we were talking about this and i and, and morgan was like look she was like you can boil it down to one thing so i'm gonna let her Share with you guys, okay? I'm going to let you guys listen to her. She's going to share with you the one fantasy that women have. And I thought this was interesting. So you share with them what the one fantasy was. Well, now I can't remember verbatim, and I said it really good, but... It boiled down it to boils, resources. If to your resources. wife, girlfriend, family members, anyone reads romance, every single romance book, be it G-rated to X-rated... It doesn't matter. 
every single fantasy boils down to one thing, and that is ultimately that the the man is so obsessed obsessed or in love with you that he would do anything. And the roads are different in which they lead, which kind of goes into themes of what the book is about. And I know nobody cares, but like that is the ultimate fantasy. The ultimate fantasy that romance books sell can be delivered in a hundred different ways is what is he willing to do to get for you, but to get you, to keep you, and, and all of those things. So that it to comes me, down to resources. I mean, we look. The whole conversation <laughs> was is that you know, women, y'all try to like make it out to be some deep, you know, overly thought out. It, it just comes down to resources. Like, does the guy is the guy willing to sacrifice everything? Is the guy willing to do whatever it takes? Is the guy willing to? invest everything into this woman so the long and short of it is for the people that are watching this like you know we want to make the relationship aspect of of <laughs> what we do be an important part of of this channel because i've said this before i i thoroughly believe that a man's happiness at home plays into how he goes about his job. It plays into how you handle things, whether or not you're going to, you know, be overly aggressive, whether or not you can understand. Look, if you don't have a relationship with a woman where you understand how she responds to aggression, how she responds to uh, to intimidation, all of those potential things that a woman goes through in life, if you don't have a partner like that, when you're working as a security guard, you're going to run up on women and you're going to potentially put them in a position where they don't feel comfortable. You're going to potentially interact with people in a way where they don't feel, you know, safe. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, it's important for us to talk about relationships and talk about, you know, how we're able to stay happy, how we're able to maintain, like, a good space between us and you know, a lot of that plays into how you guys go about doing your job, how you guys go about just getting through life. You know, it's important to talk about those things. Yeah. It's important to be open and honest about stuff. It is. I, um, am I allowed you say to, you want. to say, to respond? Um, I... Respond to what? Can, can I respond to a comment? Yeah, go ahead. Am I allowed to? Yeah, go ahead. I'm Who, to... You can just sit here. Whoever said, what is wrong with her lips? My dog tried to bite my face off two months ago. So that's what you're seeing there, bro, is my scars and shit like that since I was attacked in the face by a 90-pound Belgian Malinois. So you're welcome. That's... Just thought I'd throw that out there for everybody who's missed it. Yeah. In case you haven't had your face bitten off by a dog, that is what's happening. Yeah. Listen, she, she was absolutely... <laughs> Drop dead gorgeous before the attack, and now she's just drop dead gorgeous. Yeah, so just not yeah. the absolutely thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, she, she lost the absolutely, but she's definitely <laughs> drop dead gorgeous. But yeah, yeah, she's still on the healing process. We I got am. a couple more surgeries to go. Yeah, but uh, yeah, she's all good. Yeah, somebody said don't feed the trolls. Look, this is new for Morgan. You know what I mean? She's gotta, she's gotta get comfortable on camera, comfortable being my my wingman. Being my co-host on these live streams, she'll get better. Well, yeah. Yeah, it's hard to not. The dog it's hard didn't to not take all of my mouth, right? So it no. still has a tendency to run, yeah, and definitely. I don't stay as composed as Damien does when he does things. But <sighs> yeah, so I'm, a, I'm an old hand at this. What yeah. was your other topic you want to talk about? Well, what was well, it kind of played into the fantasy thing when we were talking about it because we've had many conversations and then speaking with other people where like the general consensus is that people are not wholeheartedly truly honest oh about my God, yeah. what their fantasies are even with their partners. And I mean deep dark recesses of fantasies, they're not even honest with their partners. So that was kind of when you brought up the book thing where I went and thought about it. I told Morgan that my deep dark, she goes, what's your deep dark fantasy? I said, my fantasy, <laughs> I said, I'm getting hot just thinking about it. My fantasy is to 
live in a neighborhood where there's no crackheads. In a, in a place where, you know, I can have my car outside and not worry about it getting broken into. Oh, my God. Stop. A place where there's no drugs in the streets. Oh. You are terrible. <laughs> yeah, my fantasy is to live in a sane environment. I, you know what's crazy is we, we moved here from Missouri. And at the time, like, we thought that Missouri was crazy, you know, we thought it was too conservative. We thought that it was too, like, just not progressive enough. Boy, boy, were we wrong. We were like, hey, let's move to Portland. You know what I mean? Like, it's just everybody's free. Everybody's doing whatever. Like, it's yeah. just live and let live. Boy, man, I would you move back to Missouri? Yeah. You didn't even hesitate. There was no, no hesitation there. no. I would move anywhere you wanted to move. I have told you from day one that I will be as fucking cliche as a Hallmark card. It would not matter to me where we lived. Yeah. Wherever you are, I am fine with living there because you are where my home is. If I can be as cliche as a Hallmark Aww. card. I know, but it's true. Like, I've lived in small town BFE. I've lived in large cities, downtown, suburban. Like, I have done all of the living geographically in the types of living that you can do. And all of it is the same. To yeah. me, the feeling is the same. This feels like home because you're here. Downtown felt like home because you're there. Like, living in Missouri where we lived in Missouri felt like home because you were there. And I've been, I've lived places clearly before you where I always thought the place was the problem and the place wasn't the problem. The company I surrounded myself by, meaning the, the ex-boyfriend was the problem. It was Absolutely. an unhappiness in that. So that's where I say, yes, I would live anywhere and be just fine with you. Yeah, and, that's very sweet. And I agree with you. Yeah. To a Wine. Point. To a point, you agree, because you really hate living here, and I... 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 Listen, I am happy with you. I'm happy being here with you. Yeah. You know? And I agree with you. Like, home is where the heart is, right? Mm hmm But when it comes to... I, I was thinking back, you know, Missouri was just so... Just chill, you know? You really didn't think about how chill it was until we moved away from it. I mean, just think about, like, how quiet, like, our streets were, how quiet our area was, our neighborhood. And we lived in the city, but it was still, like, real quiet. Are you talking about, Jeff? Yeah. Bro, we didn't even go in the living room. I, mean, we, I know it was quiet, though. I'm saying it was quiet. We, we, we were quiet. in the bedroom at the back that faced the fucking alley, and we lived above businesses that carried that normal 9 to 5, right? I mean, so we didn't even go in the living room, which faced the street. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so... That, I mean, that's not really accurate because to me, it's just as quiet here. Like, you know, different than Annie rolling up with gunshots in her car that day. That is that. true. I mean, so like, that is true. It. That is true. Look, there's crime and there's issues everywhere. Yeah. Right. I was not a fan of the tornadoes. Like, you know, I lived through you. I lived through two F4 tornadoes. Yeah. Devastating. One of the tornadoes that we that we were in 2019. 2019? 2020? 19 spring of 19 2019 the tornado was so devastating it just leveled like the entire city and jefferson city is funny any of you who haven't been to missouri but jefferson city is extremely hilly right and it has been said that that, that a tornado the, the could dawn never, of time yeah. that a tornado would never come uh downtown jefferson city because of the hills plus it uh the missouri river the way the missouri river runs right and let me tell you, were they wrong? And it was like being the movie fucking Twister. Twister like, yeah. It was crazy because they're like, hey, the, the tornado was six or eight miles, ten miles south of us and heading east. And no big deal until literally they just fucking cut tape and they're like, it's heading north. Yeah, and it's it headed right north on our the street we were on. Like our cross street, you know, was an east and west and a north and south. And it was heading, it just cut and head north. And we had three minutes to get our shit and get downstairs. And yeah, it I, crazy. It, it's crazy. Like I have never, <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. I've lived through two horrendous tornadoes. And it's it's terrifying. Like yeah. it's absolutely terrifying. Like you, there's nothing you can do. No. You know what I mean. But 
man, if I don't have to live in an area where we deal with that again, like I would be okay with that. Like, yeah. 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 Okay. If there's any questions, we should address it because I'm looking. Somebody at asked how long we've been together. We've been together for almost eight years. Yeah. Be eight years in a couple months. Somebody asked if I was drinking Kool-Aid. No, I'm drinking wine. I don't drink Kool-Aid. All right, let's go up to the top. Oh, God, it looks like there's probably a lot of bullshit. Oh, there always oh, is. Let's see here. Oh, ba, 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 ba. Did someone say, can you show feet? No, we're not showing the damn feet. They might Venmo for feet. Ain't nobody Venmoing for feet. I'm just saying. <laughs> Uh, I'm not above feet. Somebody pictures. said, this sounds like my wife when she has a glass of wine. Uh, somebody says, men should not touch women, but nowadays, uh, better, better not, not play, play games. games. Yeah, I mean, that's that's reality in general, though, you know? Yeah. Ooh, doo, 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 doo. Yeah. I thought I saw something someone said about parents and when we kind of touched on topics of that, but... Yep. I don't see anything about parents. Um, no one should touch anyone inappropriate. There are new threats that we older adults never really had to worry about. Trafficking. Yeah, that's true. Uh, someone says, let your kids watch the local news. That's probably a good idea. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. The conversation you have with your parents is not the same as the new conversations kids need these days. Thank you. Yeah, we talked about that, right? I just said that the other day that at the rate in which generations are. Okay. Now I know what we're going to talk about. Uh, well, you, you have to make it quick because your phone's going to okay, die. Okay, but listen, you, you brought up a great point that you have to have different conversations. There was a, um, a news story where I don't think she's a teacher, but she's like 25 years old. This beautiful blonde lady, 25 years old, and she was posing on Snapchat and TikTok as like a 14 or 15 year old so that she could lure these 12 to 15 year old guys to her, okay? So they had her in court, there was an arraignment. Um, they are going to prosecute her as she should be. And so Morgan and I were talking about how do you have that conversation with your kids? Like when I was a kid, as much as like, I, we all make jokes, right? Like I made the joke that my dad would have probably been like, oh, you know, like way to go, son. You know, and like most guys in the comments were saying that, like where were women like this when I was 14? Where were the women like this when I was 15? And we were talking about the importance of having a much deeper conversation with your kids in relation to things like this. Mm -hmm. So if you have that uh, an 11, 12, 13 year old boy, you have to talk about, the potential for a 25-year-old woman to try and have some sort of relationship with him. And it goes way beyond any sort of just physical contact. If someone is crazy enough to do that and think that that is okay, if someone is mentally damaged enough to think that that's okay for them to have relations with a 12 or 13-year-old kid, that person is crazy enough to stab your kid, to traffic your kid, to do all kinds of things. So mm -hmm. it's not enough to just tell your kids like, oh, you know, be aware of this and don't go to these sites and don't, you know, things that our parents would have told us. You have to have conversations about adults trying to harm them, adults trying to kidnap them, adults trying to do all kinds of things. And you have to have these real open lines of communication. It's like, but how do you do that? You know, it's, it's... I can't imagine, like my kids are old enough now, they're either out of college, in college, or on their way to college. So it's easier to have conversations like that. But I can't imagine if I had a 10 or 11 year old kid, how I would discuss some of these topics with them. I'm interested to know if any of you are parents, like are you talking about the realities of, you know, school shootings that are happening or you know, trafficking or any anything that's just happening right now. There's just so much going on in the world that these kids are subjected to that maybe we weren't necessarily subjected to that when I was a kid and you when you, when you were a kid. The conversations that our parents had with us were just so much more surface level. And it's almost like now you have to literally 
debrief your kids about like just mm -hmm. such crazy levels of stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. Do you have any thoughts on that? No, I think you're right. I can't speak from a position. I really think we should just go in there and plug it in and just migrate that way so that it doesn't die. Um, I Someone speak... said being stalked online. Like, we, yeah, that's a, a great thing. Yeah. I'll go plug it in. We'll head on that way. Okay. We'll just do this, Hang guys. On. We're I'm moving. Taking, I'm taking the whole phone because I don't want this damn thing to die. So everyone gets to see me for a hot minute. Okay. Just set it. Set it right there. Hang on. Oh, that's not gonna work. I know, trust me, as someone who is in this kitchen all the time. Okay, Hang I- on. My goodness, people are like, bro, we're not here for this we're gonna, kind of we're gonna, we're gonna get it all Jerry rigged up. Boom, holler at your boy, let's go. Stop. I speak from a position though, oh, I thought you were gonna come in here. I speak oh. from a position of an aunt and not a parent though. So when we talked about it the other day, I said that I talk to my nieces very straightforward. I don't sugarcoat, I don't sugarcoat shit with them yeah. because we don't live in an age where things can be sugarcoated. This isn't, you know, this isn't 20 years ago and my mom's going, hey, you know, would you tell me if you had sex? Uh, you know, like she's really bouncing around conversations because it's awkward, right? And it's the same thing we talked about where I said, Every dad, I know this happened with my brothers, it's very just like, well, make sure you wrap it up, son. But, you know, conversations clearly about Pornhub are circulating in the news and things going on with that and things at, at children's fingertips now. I think the conversations have to evolve in which the times we live in. And we don't live in the times where you can just semi-gloss over the top of things because it makes you uncomfortable. I think it's, you know... Every relationship comes down to trust and communication. So whether it's you and me or whether it's us, if we had children or me and my children or you and your, you know, your nieces and your nephews, like you have to have that open line of communication. But that's easier said than done, you know, because you don't want to. Well, I think people. Yeah, people. I mean, I always say I always tell especially the girls like, oh, it's going to be so much more uncomfortable for you than it is for me having this conversation. But I also think that was a good. This person says, uh, we have good kids who don't do drugs or drink, uh, but all kids lie. We try to make nothing taboo and we can have open conversations. That's so important. Yes, that I completely agree with that. Yeah. I think, see, that's where I just, I don't know, you're a parent, right? Like you have, phys not physically, but you have helped <laughs> bear the children that you have. You know, do you speak extremely candidly to them mm -hmm. like i speak from a position i always hope of like safety security and guidance as their aunt but also from a position like of complete transparency when they say something or do something um i am i'm so open with my kids i'm probably more open with my kids than most people would want me to be Definitely more than my ex-wife thinks that I should be. But, you know, I could die at any moment. I don't want my kids to ever have any questions about where my head was at, what I thought about, what I, what my, you know, what my shortcomings were, what my successes were. I try to be open with them so that they know because, you know, my mom died at, turn your body sideways just a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> oh. My mom passed away at 59 years old. And when she died, there was so much about her that I didn't know because she never talked to me. She she just never opened up. She was my mother was extremely surface level. God rest her soul. She never told me about her dreams. She never told me about her aspirations, her wants, her wishes, her shortcomings. I had to find so much out about my mom after she died. You know what I mean? And I never wanted to be like that with my kids. I want my kids to be able to tell my grandchildren and my great, great grandchildren to be able to say like, hey, this is who he was. This is what he thought. This is how he felt. I want them to know 100% what I want for their, for their life, for their development. I don't want there to ever be questions. So 
you know, even in the areas of my life where I have made some huge mistakes, and there are a lot of them, I don't sugarcoat that. I don't sugarcoat what led to the divorce between their mother. I don't sugarcoat any of the bad things that I did. I just try to be very, very honest, you know? And I'm like that in every aspect of our lives. And I hope that, I wish that more people were like that. I don't think that you and I would have the relationship that we have if we weren't honest with each other. Like, no. Oh, for sure. You know? Oh, for sure. I just, I think it, I don't want to say it stems a little bit different, but if we're sticking on topic or we can, you know, dive a little bit back off topic, but, you know, I think it's hard for parents to be, well, I don't know. I think it's hard, it's hard for parents to, because they're the ones bringing up the kids, right? Mm. I, I'm not saying it's easier for me, but I do, I think it's easier for me from an outside perspective to be able to be very, also no judgment. So, because I'm not raising them and I do stress that when I say, I don't care if it's the worst case scenario you've ever thought of in your life come to me and tell me and we'll figure it out, right? Like trying to be this a safe person for them if they feel like they can't tell their parents. But at the same time I tell them, they know that parents will be involved. You know, I'm not a free for all. Right. You can tell me anything and I'm never telling your parents, but. So speaking of relationships, what were you talking about in terms of people being mean to each other in relationships like how you talk to your spouse oh yeah i was curious what people is it okay to is it okay or socially acceptable to speak like when you get angry or when you get mad but to to call your spouse names and to speak in a is there ever a time that it's okay to speak in a disrespectful manner to your spouse i don't think so like, even if you're mad or something and you're just like, you are such a fucking asshole, right? Like, is that ever okay to be? To I, don't, I don't personally think so. Have I ever done that? No. I don't think so. I don't think that that's ever, you know, why would you want to be like hurtful to the person that you love and you care about? But I feel, I feel like I know so many people who speak like that. I feel like it's the norm to speak like that, you know, when they fight or get mad or something. So I was just curious too, if you guys did it too, because I'm pretty sure there have been, I'll say six times, we could say one time a year where, and the other time was just when you made that joke that, <laughs> okay, you know what I'm talking about a few weeks ago? <laughs> he made a joke and I was being a little sensitive and I was like, oh, you're such a dick, but it was like, I said it kind of like that in jest, but I have never even had the urge to say something to you, like to fix my mouth, to like say something to you extremely disrespectful. So I was curious if people did, um, you know, I, if I you kind of do it. that and if it's okay. like, hey, in the heat of the moment, you know, I do. I call my husband an asshole or I call my wife a bitch, you know, and blah, 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 blah. Somebody said, oh, talk that shit. So the only time I talk down to my wife is in bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we save all the down talking and um and humiliation for the bedroom. <laughs> yeah, save your save your dirty bitches for the bedroom. That it'll, it'll go further than if you do it in the kitchen. First off, I have read. Hold on, let me just say this: How many books have I read where dirty talk is the name of the game? And I don't know that I have ever read a single book where, where if it has been said, if it's been executed by maybe one or two authors, where it flows. Bitch does not really translate to sexy talk very well. And again, if there's 700 books under my belt, only one <sighs> or two manage to nail the entire scene. Oh, all right, all right. You know all what right, I'm saying? Right, all right, all right, all right. So. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that, I don't think it's right. I would not, listen, I personally wouldn't tolerate it, whether it was you. I've been in relationships where it's been like that. And that's why those relationships didn't last, amongst other reasons, you know, but. Do you think people do that because of it's a lack of respect? I don't know why. I don't know. I, I think that you have to learn how to be in a relationship. And unfortunately, nobody teaches us. Like your parents, 
are just trying to get through their own shit. They're dealing with their own problems. Like my parents were dealing with their own problems. Like they didn't ever sit me down and say like, hey, this is how you have a positive relationship. They just were going through their relationship. Yeah. It's just people screaming. And they, it's fine. Yeah. No Someone's getting murdered outside. That's nothing to worry about. Yeah, that's all good. It's fine. Um, so yeah, no, like I think that I think it's kids playing. Seriously, I think it's kids playing. Positive, positive, you know I... positive thoughts, right? It's kids. It's kids playing at 919 outside. Yeah, they're just screaming because they're playing hopscotch. So anyway, yeah. That's what happens when you live in the hood. Hood problems. But no, I, I wouldn't want to be in that kind of relationship. I was in those kind of relationships and I hated it. You know, unfortunately, like your parents don't just sit you down and teach you how to have a positive relationship. You got to figure it out if it's important to you. I have a lot of failed relationships. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's important to me to have a good relationship with you. And I'm at an age now where, you know, hopefully I can figure out some of my problems and fix them. You know, yeah. somebody said, nah, kids getting killed. He said, go help. Yeah. Yep. So. Although. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Let's finish this out so I can go check and make sure everybody's alive outside. Uh, no, I think we covered many of Was this a good, a good kind of entry into the relationship talk? Yeah, I guess. It's good. <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right. Good it's deal. It's fine. All right. Important for you guys to have good relationships. Talk to your partners. Talk about things. Be transparent with Be your transparent kids. Be transparent with your kids. Talk about all the bad stuff so they're aware of it and they can make good decisions. And um, if you haven't had a chance, definitely if you haven't had a chance and you have, you know, middle school to teenage kids, share with them that Apple River stabbing incident. Yeah. It's um, it's it's eye opening, you know, and it makes you think. So, yeah. One thing, I was watching the trial today. I'm, I promise we're going to get out of here. Mm -hmm. You don't get a lot of context in these little videos. So when I was watching the video of that river stabbing, and I even said in the video today that like the guy was kind of standing there and looking at everybody kind of weirdly. The guy, English is like his second language. I listened to him on the stand and he's like Latin or Ukrainian or something. And so he said, like, when he came over, you know, I was telling you, like, he comes over, he's kind of moving everybody's stuff and everything. He doesn't really speak very good English. So when they're yelling at him, he's not really interacting with them the way that a normal person would because he doesn't really understand the language. And so, you know, that was mm -hmm. just like another layer to the whole thing. So, but all right. All right, guys, thanks for uh, for chiming in. Okay. Morgan is fascinated with how YouTube live works because she doesn't ever do YouTube live and see the no. comments scrolling through the bottom. So no, you're just like, oh my God. Like, well, what? no, I'm like, used wow. stop it. I'm used to doing my Facebook lives and people ask me questions and things all the time. And so I'm just used to having to keep my eyes on the comments and because someone may go, hey, show me that bag again or right. hey, go back and what gotcha. color was that? And gotcha. so that's why I'm like, oh, you know, whatever. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Y'all, y'all have a good night. <laughs>